Hey, so we're gonna do another map bang. We're not sure what we're gonna talk about, but yeah, we're here at RE's, but yeah. We may have been here before, but we're eating different food. And as you can see, I've got my plate stacked up. We've got loads of potato, both of us. Absolute feast. And yeah, we've got some cucumber-like sauce here. Got some chickpeas, a lot of noise in the background as well. Loads of brown rice around this side. I also got some potatoes from yesterday with the horrible lettuce in. I don't know why they put the lettuce in there. This is like hydroponics lettuce. Hydroponic lettuce is never no good. It's not nutrient dense at all. And from what Daniel was saying yesterday, very bitter. Yeah, it didn't taste good. I ate it. It was yeah. no good. But the potatoes in there definitely taste divine. Mm. Cheers. Mm. Some pink salt there. Yep. Don't think we need any. This stuff is like round down peanuts. Oh. So good, really good protein sauce. Mm. Yeah, as you can see, we got a lot of food here. A lot of people think you need to massively restrict the one meal a day to lose weight, and that's a myth. We're saying it's super low body fat and eating loads of calories. I've already eaten two coconut waters and two little mangoes. Yeah, he means he, he made drunk the coconut water and ate the mango. <laughs> yeah. Drank drunk? Yeah. I had two co coconut waters before. We didn't think we were going to film. Well, I didn't think we were going to. See, we didn't show you that, but that's fine. And yeah, the last couple of days, so we've been eating a lot cleaner. Almost all plant-based whole foods. Because we've sort of been eating quite a lot of gluten. More than I have done in a long time. And it's okay here and there, but having it quite often, I found that, yeah, it started to make my nose sort of all irritated and quite a bit of mucus being formed. Um, I just noticed that my gut was a little bit inflamed as well, so yeah, gonna sell it for a while. Got on the turpentine. Mmm. Yeah. Just cut it out for a while, it'll be a okay. Mmm. What symptoms did you notice? Um. My skin is always the number one. Um, I get whacked to skin pimples and then um, also notice after I eat it I get a stomach ache and um, my digestion really slows down I got a sore throat that I'm not sure if it was related to the gluten or not probably um, and general brain fog that's, yeah that's usually any of those symptoms usually related to gluten for me. Yeah, and what I've always found is with gluten, unless you're a celiac, when you've been having it a lot, you can start to have negative effects like we did, but then you come away from it, let your body cleanse it all out, and then you're gonna have it here and there in more moderate amounts, not going completely overboard. But most people consume so much gluten. Normally, most Westerns are eating it almost with every meal. And it's so bad for you to be doing that all the time. It causes chronic gut inflammation, brain inflammation. It has a whole host of other negative effects as well. Yeah, I suggest if you're gonna eat it, eat some homemade bread, like some sourdough bread. Mm. Um, make sure yeah, like white bread's usually not a bad idea. The fewer amount of ingredients, the better. A lot of store-bought breads and breads at restaurants, oh. just have, they have a lot of stuff in them and really not so good stuff. And, and, and gluten moves really slow through the colon. So it's kind of like a, a time bomb of, of toxicity <laughs> that's like slowly moving through your gut. So it's just kind of a recipe for disaster, for me anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Having it like 
here and there on a like not so frequent basis. I don't notice it so much. Yeah. Um, you know, I read something yesterday. It said it was like research saying sourdough bread actually heals the gut and helps. What was it? Do something with gluten. It helps heal the damage caused by gluten. Yeah, that was it. That's exactly it. I'm glad that he remembered that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you're consuming it on a regular basis, and you have been your whole life, as with most people, they have health issues. They don't realise a lot of time they can go just by removing gluten. So, yeah, a lot of time when people come away from it, they notice that their health starts improving. And a lot of time, if they go to come back from it, then, yeah, they start to actually notice the negative effects that they were getting. To someone that's got like any chronic health issues, avoid it like the plague. Yeah. They're dropping gluten and sugar. Those two things alone for yeah. the average American or the average person on earth. You'll notice some benefit, mm. sure. Yeah. But fruit naturally going like sugar, naturally yeah. going fruit's fine, but none is refined sugar. And also all these fats as well, like canola oil. And all these other like rancid fats are really high in omega six, really high in omega, omega three. Yeah, omega six, omega eights. Ah, uh, no good. Well, yeah. omega sixes are okay as long as you got the good ratio. Yeah, of omega three to six, like yeah. sure. Otherwise, it causes serious neurological issues, like long term inflammation. Short as your maximum lifespan, it's really terrible. That's why I take the EPA and DHA Omega 3. Mm. Which I'll go and get it. <clears throat> yeah, I get a lot of people ask me, like, what supplements do I take? The ones I take with dinner, I take with dinner, these ones specifically because to maximize the absorption they need to be taken with food and the other one that I take well that one needs to be taken with food especially if it takes fat to absorb this is the omega-3 microalgae based EPA and DHA supplement go straight to the source rather than the animals should I say the fish even the fish get theirs from microalgae so yeah going straight to the source and yeah that is the new eek brand but yeah you can't necessarily get this one in America so the one I normally recommend is Vega, which I'll put a link down below for. A uh, UK and a US supplier as well. And then I take this form research, basic nutrients that has copper and iron in it. Some people don't need copper and iron. If you don't need iron, you don't need to be taking this one. You want to be taking either basic nutrients or extra nutrients. So, sorry for that background noise. So what I do is I put some links down below for this one in case you're interested in it. And just the multinutrient makes sure you're getting the broadest spectrum of nutrients possible. Give you the most optimal set of health or micronutrients. And yeah, the Omega-3 helps balance out, balance out that imbalance. Mmm, I forgot about that. Hit it. Hit it, man. Yeah, a lot of people already think, well, you take this, you need to because you're vegan, but no. Doesn't matter whatever diet I'm on, I'll be taking this multi-nutrient supplement and EPA and DHA. And quite possibly some other nutrients, because every diet has major nutritional flaws. And I want to be the healthiest possible, so that's why I personally take them. Tat going on behind us.
Yeah, and what I'm saying is when I went gluten free years ago, it was really difficult at first because I was still eating mostly packaged processed food and all, well, almost, almost packaged processed food contains gluten. But if you eat, like we are, a whole food plant based diet, it's so much easier. There's so many vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, grains, beans, legumes that you consume that are all gluten free, but well, the majority of them. Yeah, going back to being gluten free for a while, it's easy for me. Right? Yeah, especially if you know what grains don't have gluten. Um, well, it's probably easier to first identify which grains do have gluten. Mm. Um, I always remember brow, barley, rye, oats, and wheat. And oats actually only have gluten if they're cross contaminated. Most store bought oats are going to have gluten in them. Yeah. Um, but you can't get gluten free oats. That's a thing. Um, so yeah, get, get your grains in still if you want to, but just avoid barley, rye, oats, and wheat. Mm. There you go. Like rice, this brown rice, super enjoyable. Yeah. Very satiating and no gluten. Just be careful with rice. Yeah. As you've already noticed, the majority of the time I eat white rice, it's had the hull removed. The hull the whole can be very high in arsenic. Mm. Black and brown rice can be very, very high in it. And from what the research has done, rice in America, that is grown in America, some places grow it in India, really high in arsenic. But Thailand seems to be really, really low from the research I've done. So that's why I still consume quite a bit. But if I eat black rice here, it still gives me really bad head pain, makes me feel awful due to the arsenic. So that's something to be aware of. Yeah, arsenic is a very toxic, poisonous heavy metal, even in small amounts. Um, and if you want to reduce it, soak your rice, sprout your rice, that helps with it as well. Man, I put so much rice on this plate. It seems to run out really quickly compared to everything else. Can you figure out what the um, cucumber? Cucumber. Mm. Mm -hmm. Cucumber and some sort of herb. I don't know what the herb is. Yeah, I'm hoping you're enjoying the music. I didn't add it into the video. Or did I? Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the question. So how do vegans get protein then? Like, how do cows even get protein? They're huge what, animals. What is protein? <laughs> chickpeas, baby. Tons of protein in chickpeas. Yeah. Mm. There's no actual thing as protein, it's amino acids. Like, most plant foods have amino, well pretty much all of them have amino acids in. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, like how much protein do we actually need? It's a good question to ask. Mm. Or, or how much protein do you as an individual need? Depends how much you're training, you know, how you're training. Yeah, there's, there was some, uh, there's a, a raw vegan man. I actually really like him. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. And he was saying like, he knew the, all these specific amounts that I can't even remember saying like, how much he weigh, how much is, how much weight of protein he's made up from. Because all these equations, 
And he's, he's quite muscular, a bit more muscular than me actually. And he was like, all he'd need is two fresh tall glasses of carrot juice to meet his protein needs, like that's it. Like, and he does, to keep the optimal nitrogen balance. So there's a lot of myth. I've never seen any studies showing what the most amount of protein is to give nitrogen balance. I don't think there ever be someone does it. Well, maybe there will, because it costs a lot of money to do that, but. Like now where I'm at, I eat less than half the amount of protein that I used to, and I've been gaining more muscle mass and strength. So I was concerned about that, but I thought I'd try it, and it seems to be working out for me. You definitely don't need one gram per pound of body weight, like as a lot of people would tell you. Not, no, not necessary to thrive. Yeah, I'm sure cow's protein needs are a lot more than us. More than the majority of the meat. Well, grain, GMO corn, if they're in an animal factory, but if they're outside on the farm, they just eat grass. Are they going, where do I get my protein? Are they wasting away? No. Yeah, we met a lot of different people today. Some of Daniel's gonna train. He just started doing one meal down a fruit-based diet, which is pretty cool. He's been doing it seven days, said it went well. Yeah, it was a friend that's already doing what, fasting like 19 hours a day or something like that. Or yeah, around that. 16, something. And he thought about just eating one meal a day, but just hadn't pulled the trigger yet or taken the leap of faith. And I think we really encouraged him. I think he's gonna give it a go yeah. now. Yeah. Now, I mean, we just explained like it's it's worth it, and I you got the message. Mm. Um, yeah, he was inspired by us. Saw that we were feeling really good and stuff. So yeah. being a living example of pra like showing what we are practicing mm. actually worked. And it seemed for him, I. Like, He's been a bit ill recently and stuff, so that's why he hasn't done it, it's understandable, but he always took a see if pro he'd probably been contemplating that before that happened, from what he was saying, but it seems that he was having some possible mind limitations and fears getting in the way, for understandable reasons, but yeah, he'll be able to do it, for sure. And once he does, I'll definitely interview him, share his experience with him. What's your thoughts on a ketogenic diet? Me? Mm -hmm. I don't know much about it. It's um, low carbohydrates, high protein. No. Um, a true ketogenic diet, it has around 5% carbs, I think around 20% fat, and the rest is like, uh, sorry, protein, and the rest is fat. Some of them variate, but mm. a true ketogenic diet has around 5% carbs. I don't even know. Um what ketosis is, you know? Mm. Ketosis is where you just get your body into a state to start naturally producing ketones, which is like a really good brain fuel and stuff, which you can do just through fasting instead, rather than through a diet. I feel that getting a state to be in this state of ketosis all the time, I don't think that's natural. I don't see any of the longest living civilizations in the blue zones eating a high fat diet at all, not to that degree at least. Um, and yeah, yeah. Are you, high fat diet. Are you drawn to eat loads and loads of fatty foods? Like, um, sometimes, but when I end up doing it, I, I have um, digestion issues, so I end up not being able to do it. Mm. But, I mean, like, even if I eat too much durian, it's like it makes me sick. Oh, wow. Or too much oil, or. Mm. Yeah, oil for um, sure. Yeah, so. I just don't see that working for me on a digestion level. Mm. I mean, I could probably pull it off one meal a day. 
but yeah, I'm so not used to having a lot of fat. I would literally throw up. I wouldn't be able to do it. I don't even know what I would eat. High fat, probably a bunch of nuts and durian. Okay, <laughs> but yeah, I think I'd be too sluggish. Well, you wouldn't be able to eat durian. It's too high carb. Yeah. 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 You can eat young Thai, co thai coconut meat, too high in carbs. No vegetables. Mm. They eat a lot of vegetables, but just not the uh, starchy ones, I think. Oh. So for me, it sounds like one of the most limiting diets possible. Right. I've heard that people saying that. It's not so easy to eat, especially when you're traveling around and stuff like that. Yeah, it doesn't seem right to me. I feel no natural draw to it. I've tried high fat diets, it does not make me feel good at all. But yeah, if it's working for you, I'm not knocking it. It's like, if it works for you, then do it. But make sure you're getting your blood work done. A lot of people get their blood work checked and they may feel all right for short term. But when you look at their blood work, which is seeing some people do, they're horrified by some of the uh, test results they get back. But that, that was in my food. Luckily, I didn't bite on that. I got something too. Yeah, it happens a lot with rice and stuff. It has like stones in and stuff, so be careful. Add that the chickpeas as well. Could yeah, be. and it shattered my tooth once. Wow, there's another one in there. Like, look. Yeah, that's not good. There's a lot of stones in there or something. That was a, a bite of chickpeas or rice, you know? Chickpeas, I think. I, mean, I don't know why that happens sometimes with like grains and stuff. But luckily, I'm chewing softly. Yeah. Caution. This food is quite cold now, I'm not enjoying it so much. <laughs> oh, I went to Eco yesterday, restaurant. Don't really recommend it, unless you're going for their strawberry vegan ice cream, that was amazing. Everything else was very overpriced, I'd say. But the portion size that you get him and the quality wasn't that great. A lot of people like it, but yeah. The service wasn't very good. Oh, an awful the service. The food was bland. Yeah. Yeah. The cheesecake looked good. I didn't eat any of it. Yeah. <laughs> Talking of cheesecake, I could eat that uh, blueberry and vanilla cheesecake from Orion. Oh my god, that's so good. It tastes like ice cream. I thought you were going to say the um, blueberry muffin from Lex. Oh, that, no. Oh. See that dude's feet on his scooter? That was funny. No? He, he had his feet on the back pegs. Mmm. Really weird. It's like you're a racer and you can lean forward and have even fun. in there. Hmm. I'm getting a lot of them. Stop putting off the food a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to change the direction of the talk now. It's just come up in my mind. That is like, 
yeah, I've been going through some major challenges in life at the moment. I'm not going to exactly go into what, but it's been really emotionally intense, I say. Um, and yeah, what I want to say is there's a very noisy, noisy blender in the background. <laughs> <laughs> See if that goes. Could be there. Yeah. Mm. I think about doing what eating down micro videos at restaurants. There'll be a lot of noises. It cannot be avoided fully. Oh yeah, back onto the topic. Like, don't see challenging as like challenges in life as a negative thing at all. They may be really emotionally intense to get through. You may not always want to go through them, but they are a very positive thing that can benefit you greatly if you want to see it like that. Not everyone does. Most people just go into the victim mentality and say, "Poor me, why me?" Feel bad for themselves and just whine and complain about it. But instead, you can ask yourself. How can I use this to allow to push me to become a better version of myself and to my greatness? Because yeah, all of these so-called negative experiences have a very positive silver lining in there for you. But you need to make a choice to see it that way. Yeah, it's like um, superconducting pain and transforming it into growth. Mm. It's like really the the ideal not you know we all feel pain but to attach to it and um, identify with it and get stuck in it that's when you that's when you're just kind of gooning yourself if you just identify the pain and figure out why it's happening and and transmute it into growth kaboom you, yeah uh, you just leveled up yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah. And for me, all of the greatest pains in my life have been my greatest strengths. It allowed me to grow so much and become the strongest version of myself and the best, most truest, authentic version of myself. I've not always enjoyed going through them, but I always knew they were going to benefit me in a positive way. And I wouldn't be the person I am today without them. And I wouldn't change anything from my past, no matter how traumatic it is. Because, yeah, I wouldn't be the person I am today now. So I'm very grateful for all of them. And yeah, when you're going through them, you just need to take care of yourself as much as possible, love yourself as much as possible, do loving things, get the right support from people. Yeah. But don't just wallow in it, like a lot of people do for years or a whole lifetime. It's not gonna serve you at all in a positive way, except for the one positive way to serve you is to realize that you need to go through it in the way that I've mentioned and allow it to benefit you. Yeah, and I'll share one of them with you. So I think this one normally inspires a lot of people, which I try and inspire and motivate people as much as possible. So last year, my girlfriend Sophie, that was six months pregnant with my child, we was on a scooter in Phuket, Thailand. She had an accident, she fell over a van, a, a truck, run over her head, squashed it in front of me. She died, so did my baby. And I was in Phuket for almost seven months on my own. Um, yeah. I have that noise in the background, which is interrupting us. Yet again, so we will continue in a minute. And yeah, it was a really tough time. Like, so tough for me. But I knew from exactly when it happened that it was going to benefit me so much. I never went into the victim role, never blamed myself, never blamed anyone. Just accepted it. Allow myself to feel the emotions, go through the process that I needed to, and just saw the full silver lying in it. And yeah, it was a big long process because I had to go to court and have all these things that the police happen. It didn't end all of that until like around seven months after it happened. I had all these things in the news, newspapers saying horrible things about me as well, making up stories. Yeah, a lot of people see it as a nightmare, but what I can say is. Who really made me realise 
what matters in life. I was focusing on a lot of things in life that I shouldn't have, well, that weren't the most ideal things for me to focus on. It really opens your eyes to what truly matters. And it made me, especially being seven months on my own, almost seven months, it allowed me to love myself even more so than ever and be the best parent to myself and support myself and grow and evolve and learn from so many people to how to yeah, grow from that experience. And I had had so much training, so to speak, from all the motivational, inspirational, self-development and inner work coaches for ages to help me deal with that. Even my coach I was working with at the time when it happened, she was just amazed by how I was dealing with it. Um, yeah. And what I says, I wouldn't change it for the world. That may seem crazy, but it was one of the most traumatic events in my life that gave me the biggest growth possible. And I found that of all the most traumatic, the more traumatic and harder it has been, the more negative, so to speak, the better it has benefited me. And yeah, I can now say that I literally get to live the life of my dreams every single day. And I'm really, really happy. Yeah, I've got this change going on at the moment, but it's all good. And yeah, with everything that happens, it's that sort of intense, or well, just really intense in general. It's like certain aspects of yourself have to die. So you can be reborn and be like a phoenix rising through the ashes. So yeah, don't fear your challenges. They're there to serve you. You need to be tested at times. Something that's helpful for me, <clears throat> when I get really caught up in my own um, shortcomings or difficulties a good way to like shut that off and distract myself um, while still being productive is to go and serve somebody else oh for sure go help somebody else out with their craft and really that's gonna be probably the best thing you can possibly do if you're feeling stuck and you don't know how to deal with your your crap go help somebody else fix their crap mm. Because it may teach you something For about sure. what you've got going on. Mm. Or, you know, they they might be more willing to give you a hand with your stuff after you understood them. Yeah. Ross Creations, he says, seek first to understand before trying to be understood. And I think that's a really profound yeah. um, perspective. Yeah, I totally agree with that. For sure. That's my friend Vito. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I found that while I was still coaching people, while that was all going on. Yeah, it helped me a lot, actually. Got me out of my own stuff and into someone else's reality and really had made me help them, which helped me at the same time. Mm. Yeah, and also I can say, like, my life never used to be like this in Thailand. It's a full-time YouTuber. I used to work a job that I hated, surrounded by the wrong people, doing the wrong things in life, had so many health issues, was so miserable, I was dead on the inside. And yeah, I was really going the wrong place in life. But then one day I made the conscious choice to change my life. Because we can create what we want. We are our own conscious creators. So you can choose to create whatever you want. you just got to let your... Well, not let your mind's limitations and fears get in the way. Feel your fear, do it anyway. Take the leap of faith, take the jump, quit the job that you don't like. Change the location that you don't want. Get out of the race that you don't like. Do not stay in your safety bubble, even though most safety bubbles, for the majority of people, are not safe at all, even though they feel like it. Yeah, any life worth living is preponderantly based on growth and comfort is not a good environment for growth to occur no. so you gotta yeah like Danny was saying you gotta kind of take the leap of faith sometimes you gotta yeah. you gotta jump off the cliff and learn to fly on the way down mm -hmm. sometimes yeah um, so you know there's a middle way you can't you can't be going blindfold sprinting through everything in life there's seasons to everything there's a time to slow down and and recollect and you know figure out where you're at 
than where you want to go. But then there's also a time to just build up the sprint and freaking jump off the cliff and dive in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Get out of that comfort zone. It is a death trap. Come on. Come on. Staying in a job you don't like and you're in a house paying a mortgage that you, that's costing you so much money and having hardly any money spare. You're surrounded by the wrong people doing the wrong things. Like, like, you may feel safe, but you're never going to live up to your full potential and live the life of your dreams ever. So, yeah, make the choice. It's that simple. And I know so many people that live in Thailand. Like they're doing all types of jobs where it's just teaching English to Chinese students. And you can live out if it's really, really cheap, you can live out here for a lot. It depends what, how much you want to spend. But it's definitely not cheaper than Europe and America and Australia for sure. And most people come to these tropical islands just for a holiday, but it's in my way of like every single day. Because yeah, I have no other choice because I only want this. So I make no plan B, no plan C, I must make it work. I never recommend with anything, whether you're trying to create the business that you want or something else, do not have a plan B and C because it distracts from plan A. Just stick to plan A, do everything that you need to and just make it happen. Just right. as simple as that. And if it doesn't work, you're gonna be okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're always gonna have a net to fall back on. If you're following your heart. Yeah, was the thing. Oh yeah, I find if you're following your heart, you do the right things consistently. You ain't gonna not, it's not gonna work. So ain't higher than yourself. The universe created God, Buddha, Allah, whatever you call it, is gonna help you out. Right. Because it wants you to succeed. And that's how it's worked out for me, I'm telling you. It hasn't failed me so far. I've been working for years and years and years. Many things that I've applied that to. Have you ever read The Alchemist? No, I think I've heard of it, but super good book that changed the direction of my life heavily I mean, it's it's a story of that it's a it's a boy that follows his heart and God or the universe whatever you want to call it gives him everything he needs along the way at the most opportune moments at the perfect moment every single time and no matter how dark it got and you know how much it looked like it was about to be a dead end it, you know, he always came out on top because he was following his heart. And it's kind of cheesy, um, stereotypical, whatever, but... Well, is it a book written on me? Exactly. Sounds like it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> it, it really, it's, the hero, it's the hero's journey is what it is. Uh, it's the same story that's been told a million times. It's funny you say the hero's journey. You have archetypes in families. You can have it with friends as well. There's like the martyr, the hero, the golden child and there's, there's a few others as well the lost child i used to be the scapegoat then i become the hero so it's funny he says the hero and i've like saved my family and helped them with so many things turned their life around and their health like and they're so proud of me yeah the hero has come to save the day yeah and i used to be a high school dropout like i did so bad at school I just could see through all the rubbish. I, I didn't even, uh, I fraudulently passed high school, <laughs> you know, because I knew it had no bearing over who I was as a person, which is ultimately all that matters. Yeah. And so I didn't care. Mm. Of course, everybody was telling me like, oh, you need this piece of paper oh. so you can get that piece of paper and then go get some more pieces of paper. And I'm like, nah. Yeah, so then you're getting a job and be a slave. Right, and I'm like, I don't think, I want to do that and I was, I was realizing this in like middle school I went through depression in middle school because I didn't realize there was an alternative way to live and so I'm seeing you know all, all these people go to high school and go to college and then get a job and taxes and all this and the mortgage and the house and the family and I was like well that to me doesn't seem like it's worth living and so I was starting to question life. I'm like, I'm like, I don't even think life is worth living, honestly, because that looks like hell. Um, and so I was, you know, a lot of contemplation of suicide was happening to me wow. in middle school. Um, but then I realized, oh, you don't have to do that. There's like a whole world out there to explore. And, and like, 
whoa, you know, the universe is actually good, and and if you follow your heart, it gives you good things. And so, luckily, I came upon some of that knowledge and some of those perspectives, and changed my my outlook on life to a more healthy one. Yeah, nice. Yeah. And yeah, for me, it's all about finding what I was passionate about once I come out of school, focus upon it myself, self-learn, and yeah, just experiment with these things. And I found that I just wanted to learn and learn and learn and learn and learn. I was just so passionate yeah. about it. And I would be having that radical focus and just really become really like high level at whatever I was passionate about. That's how you know you found the niche when you when you just freak out and you just want to absorb everything there is possibly to know about that thing that's when you know that's yeah a, that's when you know for yeah. sure it's like a it's a no mind you just you zen out you get into the flow and you you um you just absorb yeah and you just think about it dream about it speak about it all the time like yeah. that's how i've become such a high level like health coach detoxification specialist and all these other things that i'm passionate about because I've studied hours and hours and hours of them all and experimented so much. And that's what I say, if you have children, do self-directed learning. Right. Find out what your child is passionate about. Try them out with loads of different things. Funnel them in the direction of whatever they're passionate about. And that is when you're gonna become great about something. When you love something so much, it doesn't even feel like a job when you create into a job, so to speak, that you will just keep going and going and going and going. We just have this, this burning desire because you absolutely love it. And that's how like Olympic athletes become the best. Because they love it so much. Right. Well it's a high level like artists that do paintings or drawings or so a gymnast, actors anybody, and yeah. Any yeah. high level anything. Because they just are obsessed. Yeah. Yeah, it becomes their magnificent obsession. Um yeah. Get get obsessed with something and stay obsessed with it. Yeah, and for me, I used to get <laughs> obsessed with things like certain illegal substances and all these other different things that were destructive and yeah. sabotaging to me. And instead of channeling them into other things, gaming taught me a lot. It gave me a lot of focus, told me to be like really strategic. Yeah, and work hard. And all these other skills that I call transferable skills into other areas of my life and businesses that I've created. It really helped me a lot, for sure. Yeah, we were talking about that, how we both had the experience of dabbling in a lot of different areas in our life and then eventually having a realization like, oh my gosh, I've like done everything I need to do to like <laughs> to create just a, a life of abundance. I have this giant toolbox now of all these you know, things that I've picked up from from doing multiple other things. Yeah. And Yeah. And you got the internet. You can learn anything you want. You can yeah. study university courses for free if you want to do whatever you want. Like it's all online. You just gotta have that self discipline to learn it. That was my main thing. Getting out of high school and everybody's telling me I need to go to college. I'm like, literally get on the internet. Like are you are you blind? Like everything is on the internet now. Yeah. And it colleges can't even keep up with the internet in a lot of ways. Of course, you know, there's the aspect of of being surrounded by people that are like-minded and have a common goal and you got professors and things that, you know, there are advantages to go to college and it might be a useful tool for somebody else, but for me, it, I was like, no, nah, I don't need that. And no. If I, if I have to sit down and figure out why I need to pay an institution that amount of money and go into that amount of debt, for a piece of paper, it just didn't make sense. Yeah, and that's it. A lot of people get into it and they don't actually do anything with their university degree and they get into so much debt. And yeah, what I say is with my sister Lucy, she's amazing, but she, I don't know, she has found it harder to function in the real world with setting up businesses and getting them going. Because she's been in the system so long with all the different training that she did. And yeah, a lot of people when they get out of university and they go into the real world, they find it really hard to find a job. A lot of them don't find a job and they just end up in a job that is just like a low paid, low end job that just they become a slave to because they have bills to pay and so forth. So yeah. So I'm, I'm actually done with this food. It's boring me now. Um, are you full? He's probably full. Pretty full, yeah. 
I think we're going to take a trip to Agama or something because I definitely want something else. Yeah, I some feel, dessert would be tasty. Yeah, that, <clears throat> that's what I'm thinking. Mine's alike as always. Seems right. a lot of things we both get thinking. One of us will say something, the other one will be like, wow, I just thought that. Yeah. Like, very, very in sync in line. It's amazing. You know you're with an amazing person when those types of synchronicities are happening. And there, yeah. We're going to pack up and get a move on. So yeah, we've now arrived at Agama. I've got this apple and walnut cake and this. And I was just saying, I don't know why I bought both of these. This one is very dense, like a raw granola bar. You got the same? Yep. One of them? Mm, looking good. And as we were leaving, RE's, my friend Pina was turning up. I forgot I'd invited him. I forgot to tell him that we were actually going to eat earlier than I said in the gym. Can you see if I'm here? What'd you get? Veggie yeah. burger and a rice, rice, and vegetable rice. Yeah. Mm. You're the second person who told me about this Burmese TV salad today. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. I mean, a lot of people keep telling me is I haven't tried it yet. Mm. So yeah, this is Heinen. You haven't seen him in the video for us from the Fair Islands, which is from the stars and beyond. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Mm. Uh. So how long have you been doing one meal a day for? One and a half months. Mm -hmm. Around there. Going well? I think so. Uh, I was doing uh, intermittent fasting before. Uh, so it was, it was quite natural, I think, to progress into that. Mm -hmm. I was doing like uh, between like 14 to 16 hours before, sometimes 18 hours. So I've done that for like a year or so. Yeah, and similar to me. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, you know, so you introduced me to the one meal thing. Yeah. And I was like, okay, let's try it. Yeah. yeah, and I would say, like, from my own personal experience as well, just doing two meals a day for a while and then switching to one meal a day is so much easier for a lot of people I would say. It's not such a shock to the system. Mm. Man, I love this cake. Is that the cake that? No. Apple and walnut cake? Apple and walnut. Walnut, okay. Good <laughs> free, it's amazing. Mm. Take a little there. Uh, yeah, try it, man. Go forward, mate. Oh. There's dog coming towards us. Hello. Hello. He's hungry as well. Good dog. Hello. There's no one that's only food. He just wants cake, doesn't he? No? Bang in the towel. Hmm? Hello. Hello, you're beautiful, isn't that? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nice. I love dogs. They're so amazing. They're very loyal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've actually never eaten here, so I'll just pick. I've been trying to make gourmet salad or healing salad. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got some sweets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really happy with the flour. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Oh, wow, that was quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Lentils and cabbage and tomatoes. That is so heavy and dense. And cheese. Need some ice cream with that. Yeah, pretty heavy. And yeah, talk about my training. Right? I set up like I train like about four times a week, do running pretty much every day. But Heinen, is it you do one full body workout a week? Is it correct? Yeah. What's it called? Could you explain a little bit about it? Like, because you mentioned it to me before, but I wouldn't know how to explain it to anyone. Well, it's, um, I don't actually know what the guys called uh, them. Like I said, a while ago, but essentially it's just that you 
you exercise, uh, yeah, you exercise once a week, um, and you do like it's it's, it's called H I T, so not H I I T, like not high intensity interval training, but just H I T, high intensity training. So you just put as much as you can on, um, and you do that for 60 to 90 seconds and you do it like a full breath you don't you don't like do like like you do five six reps for that to up to 90 seconds and until you fail so you just hold it as long as you can you do that once like the main muscle groups you do it like um, yeah, like once a week, and um, because you get that amount of, of rest in between, and you can just you can just do like more every week. And thank you. Yeah, so I've, I've just I've just tried it. I, I tested it for like uh, two months, uh, and I've seen progress every time. Like, yeah, I mean it, it's, it's, it's so. I just I just tested two for the time saving. So you do one full body workout a week. Yeah. Do you do any aerobic training or any other? Not much, like a little bit of rowing maybe. Yeah. Um, I do like well I do uh, that's so that's for weight lifting and then I do other kind of exercise. You know, just for flexibility and so on. Um, but yeah, just to see see how how we can have maximum uh, impact yeah. with minimal effort. Right. Um, it's still like it's it's, it's it's hard as fuck because you do everything in right. one go. Yeah. So it like, takes a lot of energy. Yeah, I saw you doing it earlier. It's pretty intense to for sure. Yeah. It's like with that, people don't have any excuses to not have a nice body and a high fitness level no. at all. Do they? Like, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, exactly. That literally takes like the maximum two hours, and that's when you do a lot of extra like sets. You can also just do the main, like the the, the main muscles. So you do the chest, you do the like the two back exercises, the shoulders. Um, what else do you do? You do like five, and uh, then you do the legs as well. That's it. so you get the main muscles, and then as you increase the muscles, you burn more fat. Right on? Right. Yeah. So that's just, that's just the basic, and then you can build it up. Yeah. That takes like less than an hour to do just those muscles, because yeah. you just do one set. Right. Yeah, so no excuses not to train. Yeah. A lot of people watch hours of TV a week. Skip the TV, go try. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for sharing that with them because, yeah, that'd be helpful for a lot of people. Mm. It's really heavy, but it's not. It doesn't feel, even though it feels really heavy, I thought it's going to be a lot denser than it's ever made. Yeah, for sure. It's really fruity. Mm. I like it. Actually, like chocolate, so it's just a bit of chocolate. Oh, you're back, friend. I to the them. Yeah, as you see, my friend's eating quite a bit. Burmese seeds, you know, leaf salad, like vegetable fried rice, rice. <laughs> and a vegan burger as well. Yeah, that's a cute. Vegan burger looks different to normal. Uh, so where'd you go? Mm. Or the that one, not the mushroom yeah, one. Not the mushroom. Mm. We had a really amazing yeah, so burger at um, Big Mountain. Where's that? Yeah, yeah. On the way to the pyramid, you know the pyramid? Yeah. 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 They do like vegan cakes, vegan pancakes, vegan burgers, vegan charcoal pizza. Vegan charcoal pizza? Okay. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of um, interesting foods, so yeah. Mm. That was good. Still not sweet enough for me though, I want something really sugary. That happens to me after a while of having quite savoury things, I start wanting sugary stuff. And colder stuff as well. 
coconut water. Oh, coconut water. That's oh. It's a good option. Every time the coconut water is a good option. Mm. Yeah, I've got sort of raisins, sultanas in it, coconut. That's, so, that's good. Yeah, I can eat another one of those. Mm. 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 I feel good. I can eat so much ice cream like that. Mm. Maybe she's going and buy a kilo of ice cream. Mm. 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 Yeah, I thought that. The ice cream place when we go to Lake Organic said they sell it to us by the key line. Thought about buying some leaving at home, but that could be very, very dangerous. Not when you're going home, man. You get that. You, you won't um, eat it all day. You might just have it for dinner. Yeah, well, my one meal a day might turn into one meal a day of ice cream every day. Jesus. I turn into a snowman. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. It's get your green shake in beforehand. Yeah. Be too bad. yeah, you can pull it off for a few yeah. minutes. Yeah. 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 See what happens to my training. That might be a fun experiment, actually. Ice cream, <laughs> ice cream diet. We end up looking like Brandon Carter yeah. in his ten thousand calorie challenge you watched the other day. Oh my gosh, that was gold. Don't, don't know about Brandon Carter fitness YouTube. He's done ten thousand calorie challenge, and at the end he's got this big tub of ice cream. It's all blue stuff in it and everything. And he's laying on the porch going, and he looked like so drunk. And he looked out of his mouth, it's all over his face. Yeah, he looked like he was on drugs, and he's like, oh, like this, and just like falling down. And then he goes and throws up, comes back, starts eating it more, and he's just like, oh, like, it was hilarious to watch. Like, <laughs> go and search that up. I don't normally watch entertaining things, but I did at that point. Yeah. One of the most hilarious food challenges that I've ever seen, for sure. Some people say that it seems that I'm doing food challenges when I don't think so compared to the people I see on YouTube. It's not a challenge to you. No. Much no. Yeah, what we just said, it's not a challenge at all. I could eat more. And I am confident I eat more. You know? Yeah, it's like you could eat more if you wanted to, but you feel satiated. Like. That's a good thing with one move day, is knowing when you're at the point of satiation. Because you can agree. I've been doing that a little bit recently. But the thing is, if you do overeat, then it's like you got another 23 hours until you eat again. So yeah. it's like you, you can deal with it. Yeah, your body breaks it down. Breaks it down and stuff. You get hungry at once. Yeah. A lot of times you think, oh man, I can't, I'm not going to want to eat tomorrow or whatever because I've overeaten. But then when it comes to the next day, they're pretty fine. But if you just get eating another big meal in the morning and over it again, do that two, three times a day, you're going to feel like rubbish. So yeah, we're going to quit it there. Might go somewhere else to eat this thing. Well, I might do. He'll probably come with me if I do. Maybe we'll eat more, but we shall see. We left Agama, and now we have ended up coming to Eat Co. And Daniel is in here sorting out the ice cream for us because we're going to get the ice cream and take it to Agama to go and get some vegan cheesecake as well. And yeah, look at this place. They've got some amazing stuff. All of these different foods. Cheers, he's a bit of like a what I eat in a day, muck bang. Like look, all vegan. Like so many things. You gonna get something? I think so. Yeah, they do like these homemade tropical vegan ice pops as well. So we've got the blueberry vegan cheesecake, which is completely vegan and raw from Orion, which we're at now. Four scoops of this strawberry ice cream that's vegan. And yeah, I put the price down below for this. It's not the cheapest, but it is definitely worth it. And yeah, what we need to do is scoot the cheesecake over there. And now we're talking. Oh man, that might that might get a little messy. Gotta get after that. Mmm, <laughs> that's a good time. Oh, mmm, mmm, mmm. Welcome to Yumsville. Look at that. That is amazing. You want to try it? Welcome to Yumsville. Population Danny. And I. It is the king of ice cream. Yo, dog. Yeah, that's really good. See why I wanted it? <laughs> Mmm. 
We need to see if they sell this one by the kilo. Yeah. There's a fork there if you want to try. The cheesecake? Mm hmm. Mmm. Not as good as the ice cream, for sure. I know I actually like the base on these, so I won't eat the base. Let's try it with the ice cream. Is that for me? Food? No. The ice cream blows it out of the water. I know. I know that when I've actually got the cheesecake, to be honest with you. No, we're learning. Blueberry muffins go better with the ice cream, for sure. The one's from Wax? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They looked green on time lo lo last time. It's really strange. And yeah, someone asked me recently when I kept going from one place to the other, is this what you eat in a day? No. I go from one place to the other straight after, so it's one meal in a day. It's a lot of time. I get bored of food at one place, and I'm like, let's go to another, another one. See, I've been to four places there. Mm. Get the best of both worlds, mm. get the best of all the worlds. Yeah, like eat cone. It's only really worth getting the ice cream, in my opinion. Everything else is quite. Yeah. The ice cream and the potatoes, that's all they got. Mmm. They're they amazing got. for the vegan potato salad. Oh my god. Yeah, the base is too much for me. Like, I like the sweetness, but it's just like overly sweet. It's like dates. I'm not so keen yeah, on dates. It's like eating a date. Mmm. But it ground up with nuts and. Yeah. Good. It's just not good. Yeah, I'm not into mm, dishes that got loads of nuts in with loads of fruit and stuff. Like, it's not for me. It's a bit of a clash. I definitely don't want the base, no, because I'm going to throw it. Maybe I'll try it. Tiffany was here, she said I'll throw that away. She'd go mad and she'd take it home or eat it. Yeah, I can... I can handle it. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, a lot of strawberry ice cream tastes really synthetic because they just use synthetic flavorings, but this... Real deal. It's like they've frozen strawberries and blended them down. It's like wow. Seriously, when it comes to ice cream, I can eat so much ice cream. You gotta do a challenge, man. Yeah, do the ice cream challenge. You gotta do it, it's your destiny. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my destiny gift. is to turn into a snowman. Right. <laughs> It'll be a gift to the world. Yeah, if I was doing the ice cream challenge, I'd need to chew a lot to warm it up. And then it melt a bit. I think the only reason I'm able to handle the taste of this is because it's in the strawberry ice cream. Mm. Yeah, and seriously, how many diets can you eat the type of foods that I am and the amount I am eating and lose loads of weight? I only know I have one meal a day really doing it. Mm. Every bite of this is just like, wow. Man, if you blended this, blended this up with some bananas and coconut water. Uh oh. Yeah. And some protein. Or oh, some pea protein. Dude, game over. Mm. We love the pea protein. Not people complain about it, but one I got is very high quality, enzyme infused. Oh man, I 
would be so good with protein. Yeah, for sure. Mm. We gotta do that. What? Let's do that tomorrow. Mm. Get coconut water and ice cream from Eco and put it in our shake. Fuck mm. yeah, why haven't we thought of that? Mm. Yeah, I'm trying to think of something else. Genius. Mm. Do their dishes for them. Well, this is what I was told by someone before. If like someone makes you food and you don't lick the plate, uh -huh. it's rude. It shows a sign that you really enjoyed the food. Because yeah, went to a lot of places. It's all good, Dad. Yeah. We'll go ahead now. Take it easy. Maybe watch Calisthenics videos or so. Who knows? See what happens. Got all my work done today, so I don't need to do no more. I always prefer to try and get my work done early in the day. Then I can do whatever I want for the rest of the day. So yeah, that's it from both of us. We'll catch us very soon in the near future, as always. And yeah, as always, don't forget. Leave your questions down below. Like, share, and subscribe. To receive a lot more one meal a day, what I eat in a day videos, what I do in a day videos, calisthenics workout videos, calisthenics professional videos, inspirational and motivational videos, intermittent fasting videos, and many other videos that will teach you of many amazing different things, help you go in the direction of achieving and sustaining the fitness levels, energy levels, and the dream body that you desire as well. And also, yeah, with those videos, they can just inspire you and motivate you to push yourself to become the best version of yourself and achieve what you truly want to within yourself and your life as well. So if those type of videos sound good, you make sure you click that subscribe button down below and you click the bell notification button next to the subscribe button. Otherwise, YouTube will not notify you of when new videos are uploaded. And at the moment, I pretty much have new ones coming every single day. So make sure you stay tuned for those new videos. As always, stay fit, stay energetic, and go and get those gains. Peace.